Did you know that you can edit your videos, add music to your videos, and even blur out faces right inside YouTube? Today I'm going to show you how to use YouTube's native video editor. Let's go. So YouTube's native editor is found in YouTube Studio. So if you go to YouTube, just click on your little face here and select YouTube Studio. Then on the left side of the screen, head on over to content, select the video you want to edit, and look for this icon here that says editor. Let's click on that. So let's take a quick tour of this window. On the top right here is a playback window where I can see my video. Down here is like a timeline of your video, very similar to any video editing app you may use to put your videos together. So at the bottom here is all my visuals and above that are my audio waveforms. And if you're part of the YouTube partnership program where you have ads running on your videos, you'll have this line here as well. On the top left are all the different functions in the video editor, and we're going to get to that in a second. Now, if we want to resize our window, we can just grab these double lines here and drag up or down to make that playback window bigger or smaller. And if we want to zoom into our timeline, we just use this slider here. I'm going to zoom back out. So let's get to those video functions. I'm going to start with the first one here, which is trim and cut. So if I select trim and cut, you can see I now have these blue brackets at the beginning and end of my video. These are useful if, let's say, you took a big breath at the start of your video and wanted to trim that off. So we can grab this little blue handle and just trim the start of our video. And we can do the same thing here at the end if we wanted. And then if you wanted to get a good look at what that trim did, you would just hit this preview button here yeah. and you can see that I've cropped off the start of my video. If I want to undo that, I can just hit this undo button or I can grab these blue handles again and bring them back to the beginning or end. If I wanted to make those changes, I would just hit the save button and you get this pop up window here. It says that it can take a few hours for these changes to be applied and that viewers will continue to see the current version of the video if it is public and you won't be able to make any other edits to the video at this point either. So you want to make sure that you're done with all of your edits before you save them here. I'm going to hit cancel. Now, what if we wanted to cut a section inside of our video, not just the beginning or end? We can do that too. What you'll want to do is queue up your playhead to the point that you want to cut and select this new cut button here. And now we get these red brackets inside of our video. And just like with the blue brackets, I can trim up or expand the amount of the video I'm cutting out. I would recommend using the waveforms as a guide here. So if you were just trying to cut out one sentence, you could see where that sentence might end by looking at these waveforms. Now, if I wanted to check and see how this edit was going to look to the viewer, I would queue up my playhead before those red brackets. And I'm going to zoom in a little bit on the timeline and then use the slider here at the bottom of the frame to get that red section in view and watch what happens. I'm going to queue up my playhead before the red brackets, hit the play button. Magic headlighter ring it skips right over that red section. So you can fine tune from here if you need to clean that up. Once you're satisfied, just hit this check mark. And we can see now that cutout section has these dotted lines running around it. And this part of the timeline has been faded out almost totally white. If I wanted to change it, I could head up to cut one and hit this pencil. And that brings back those red brackets. So I could change that again. I'm going to hit that check mark. And if I wanted to add a new cut, I'm just going to zoom out of my timeline so I can get a better view, cue up my playhead to the next section I might want to cut out, let's say right here, and hit new cut. And again, there are those red brackets and I would go through the same process again and again until I was satisfied. Now I'm going to discard those changes. Let's move on to the next function, which is to add blurs to your videos. If you have corporate logos or people in your videos where you did not get permission to show their faces, you may want to blur out those elements in your videos after you upload them to YouTube. So just hit the plus sign to add a blur and you've got two options here. You can do the face blur where you're going to blur out faces or you can do a custom blur. I'm going to select custom blur. And now you can see I've added a fourth track in my timeline. This icon indicates this is my blur. And if you look in the playback window, I now have a rectangular blur in my frame. And let's say I wanted to blur out this photo. I could just resize it in my player window and I could choose for the blur to just stay in that position 
or I could have YouTube track the object. In this situation, because this is a static shot and it's a still object, I'm going to select fix blur position. Now selected on the blur feature, if there was something else I wanted to blur, maybe the title of this book, I could cue up my playhead in this shot and in my player window, just draw another box around those elements. And again, this is a static shot. So I'm going to select fix blur position. And then let's say down here, for some reason, I wanted to blur out my face. I'm going to draw a rectangle and then select oval. And this time I want to track the object. And if I scrub my playhead over this, you can see that it's moving with my face. So that is how you manually add blurs to your videos. But let me jump to another video and I'm going to show you what I think is the coolest feature of this whole thing. So I'm going to discard these changes, go back to my channel content and select this video here. Let's go to the editor. And again, on blur, this time I'm going to select face blur. And it's going to take a few minutes, but it's going to find all of the faces in my video. And this is a very quick video. It's only 30 seconds. So it did not take long at all to detect all of the faces in this video. And if I hover my cursor over them, you can get a better look at what they look like. So I have some options here. I can select individual faces or I can select all of the faces. Let's select all of them and hit the apply button. And you can see that all of these faces have been blurred out and they are motion tracked. All right, we're going to go back to that first video and I'm going to show you the rest of the things you can do with the YouTube editor. But before I do that, if you guys like this video, if you feel like you're learning something, let me know, give me that thumbs up, hit that subscribe button and ring the bell. Okay, now let's add music to this video here. So what I'm going to do is hit the plus sign on the audio option. And there's a bunch of tracks in here that YouTube has licensed for you to use for free. Now, if none of these cuts of music float your boat, that's okay. There's even more tracks. Let me show you how to access them. Head on over to the audio library and in a new tab in my browser, it's going to open the audio library where you can access more cuts of music or even sound effects. Let's go back to music. And if you scroll down, you'll see that there are almost 1500 tracks in here. That's a lot of tracks to go through. We can narrow this down by searching a keyword. I'm going to search pop. And now I've got about 175 tracks to choose from. Let's pick this track here. And what I'm going to do is add a star to it. All right, let's go back to our first tab with the video editor. And what I'm going to do is hit the refresh button, go back to add audio. And now when I go to start, there is the music cut I selected. I'm going to hover my cursor over this line and hit the add button. And now you can see under my audio tracks in my timeline, you can see the waveforms from the talking in my video. But now I also have this cut of music. Now this cut of music is three minutes long. And so it's not going to fill the entire duration of my video. So if I chose to, I could go through that whole process again and add more cuts of music throughout my video. Or I could move this cut of music down and I can trim it as well from either the beginning or the end. Right now, this music cut is going to be on full blast at 100% volume, which if you have talking in your video is definitely not what you're going to want. So what you would want to do is hover your cursor over this icon to adjust the mix level. And I'm going to pot that way down to about 10%. And so that way it's not overpowering the rest of the audio in my video. Now there's a couple other features in here I want to show you, but I do want to point out, and you've probably noticed this, that this might not be the best place to put together a really complicated YouTube video. If you want to know more information about how to assemble a really polished YouTube video, I made a whole video about that. I will put a card to it here and I'll also link to it down in the description. Back here in the YouTube editor, you'll see a few other lines here we haven't yet talked about. You can add end screen to your videos here in YouTube editor. And this is kind of the same process that you would go through when you upload a video. So I'm going to hit this plus sign. Let's say we wanted to add a clickable end screen to the end of our video. So you'll get this little box here. I'm going to move it into position here and I can resize it if I needed to. And by default, the end screen duration in this editor is 20 seconds, which for me is too long. I don't like to have it on the screen that long. So you can trim here, just like you can trim any other element we've looked at down here in the timeline. 
And just like when you upload a video, you have all of these settings here. You can choose to show your most recent upload, the best one for that particular viewer, or a specific video if you want. And if you choose specific video, you're gonna get this pop-up window where you can search your own videos or you can search videos from other channels. Let's stay on best for viewer. And then if we wanted to add another element, we could add another video and we could set that one to most recent upload and trim that. We could also add a subscribe button and reposition that. So this is very similar to the workflow when you upload a video where you can add end screens. I'm gonna discard these changes. Let's go to info cards. Info cards are the little white boxes that pop up in the top right of the frame in certain videos. So I could insert an info card, let's say to this video. And then down here in my timeline, you can see I've got this little info card line now, and this little flag represents the placement of my info card. So I could queue it up and have it pop up at any point in the video I so chose. And you can add multiple cards if you wanted to. Let's discard those changes. And the last option down here in the video editor is ad breaks. If you're part of the YouTube partnership program, you can actually customize the placement of ads in your video. So by default, this is where they're placed by YouTube. YouTube tries to find natural places for the ads to go. But if I felt like I wanted an ad in a specific part, I could hit the edit button here and I could manually type in a time code where an ad could go. I could even add more ad breaks and drag these little flags around here in my timeline if I so chose. I can delete ad breaks. And then if I wanted to reset and place automatically, I would just hit the place automatically button again. And it's also important for you to know that just because you drop an ad break in this timeline, it doesn't necessarily guarantee that a viewer is gonna see an ad at that point. You know, YouTube goes through fluctuations throughout the year about how much money advertisers are pouring into the platform. So sometimes your viewers will see no ads and sometimes they'll see lots of ads in your videos. So just know that you can't game the system by adding a bunch of ad breaks in this timeline. I hope this helped you understand how to use the editor feature in YouTube Studio. In my opinion, I don't think that this user interface is that intuitive. So I hope that you found this helpful. Let me know in the comments, say hi. It always brightens my day. I picked out some other videos I know you're gonna love and I'll see you again.